right, welcome to another episode of Homestead Shop Talk Podcast. This is episode 58 with Al from Lumna Acres, Ben from Holler Homestead, and myself, Jason, from Sow the Land. You know, we all individually have our own YouTube channels, Holler Homestead, Lumna Acres, and Sow the Land. So, you know, we're just getting together once a week, and we just hang out and talk shop and talk about our week and, and just kind of see what's going on, almost like a, I guess, a after show of our individual channels. And, uh, yeah, we'll just hang out and talk about kind of whatever. So I appreciate everyone listening. And, and if you're new, thank you for being here and thank you for subscribing. Uh, so how, how have you guys been? What's going on? Good warm week here. It's been rainy. a, uh, yeah, it's been a warm, rainy, a lot of rain. It's been nice. Like we needed the rain desperately, but just like yeah. not in the amounts we're getting. Cause it's like, I have a whole bunch of stuff to do in the dirt and, it's muddy. Yeah, the grass is growing for sure. Like it, the grass is looking gr- good. Our grass, like green, lush, it's growing. Time have you had to, cow. Yeah, have yeah, you I had know. to bust out the lawnmower <laughs> yet? I had to mow this weekend. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, the animals are loving it. I'm moving them, you know, on on grass and stuff. So they're they're you can see them eating it. So the pigs and stuff. But uh, but yeah, the humidity, you know, the, the plus the rain, everything loves it mosquitoes how cold, how cold <laughs> have you guys been getting at night we went down in like the 50s Ooh, you guys seeing that 50s. or no i think we saw 68 the other <laughs> night. The night that's decent i got up the other morning and opened up all the doors and windows you know at five o'clock uh it's it's pretty pretty brisk outside like it it almost feels like fall weather like it's just starting like it's a hint uh so yeah I'd, i'll take it 50s would be nice though that'd be that'd be even better yeah they were calling for 42 one night i don't think we got that low i think we got down to 48 but Man, that's pretty good too early for 42 that's for sure oh yeah <laughs> and that's almost colder than alaska like there's there's places up in alaska the temperature in the summertime is exactly like it is here i heard that i was like you mean it gets into the 90s up there wow. who would want to live there like hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like if I was right. gonna move to if I was gonna move to Alaska, it's because the highs are in the seventies. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, sometimes I wonder if there's places in the Midwest that get you know have worse temperatures than Alaska. Right. So who wants to go first? Who had the better week? <laughs> Define better. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? More I can go first. I I, I <laughs> uh, productive is not in my uh, my repertoire this week. Uh, I might as well just talk about it. So, uh, I've kind of like, just, I'll just say it. I've been really lazy the past week. Uh, I've done a lot of sitting around and not doing a whole lot. Um, there's a little bit of wood chipping this past week. Um, kind of, you know, residual cleanup from the, uh, storm damage, but it's still been stinking hot. And so I can be out in it for a while. Uh, it's like today, the video I shot today, I was out trying to, trying to deal with the mud and the pig pens because we've had so much rain, you know, I've, I've probably put two truckloads of wood chips in the pig pens. And once we get rain like this, I don't know how nice. they do it, but it, it's, it reminds me of concrete. I, I think I actually said that in this video is the like <laughs> concrete. If you vibrate it, the rocks sink down and the cream comes to the top. That's kind of what the pigs do with the mud and the wood chips. They'll somehow, from agitating the mud, Mm. the wood chips sink down, and then just this sloppy, sloppy mud comes to the top. That's what we got going on right now, and it is nasty. Like, getting in there, you just about lose a boot as you're trying to... Like, every morning I go in there, and I have to, like, (laughs) pull the feed pans out of the slop. And, like, it was so bad this morning, I... It was like, I'm not sticking my hands in this first thing in the morning. So I went and grabbed the uh, the pitchfork. I'm like prying these feed pans out of the sloppy mud. And I was like, I got to do something today. So yeah, it was quicksand. Uh, yeah, it's like quicksand, but stinky pooped in quicksand. Like it's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Usually I don't let the pig pens get that bad. No. You know, you know, if it gets that bad up in the woods, you just move. Like hopefully it never gets that bad. Yeah. If it does, it's a bad on you because you're not moving, but which that's current currently what it happens. spot the, the pigs currently are in up in the woods is starting to look like I've let them run it into the ground. Uh, but yeah, that was kind of my thing. I 
I haven't done a whole lot this week. A lot of sitting, a lot of holding baby. Just kind of enjoying it, being lazy and enjoying it. You're not working on the, you weren't working on the house at all? So I've got to do a whole bunch of like, we're just kind of break dirt, dirt work stuff. And I don't know. Oh, okay. Time this past week has kind of got away from me. Um, yeah. I've got to dig up, I've got to dig up the pylons and I have to mortar all those in. And so I've just been waiting for, you know, a couple of days of dry, but it's rained and it's muddy. I've kind of been using that as an excuse, I guess. It's like, ah, you know what? It's too, it's too wet today. I'm not going to go out there today. And then I don't know if you guys are like me, but there are so many things to do on a homestead. Like you can literally work on everything, but the project you're supposed to work on and stay busy. So that, yep. that wasn't my week. I wasn't yeah. busy on other stuff. I was, I was literally sitting in my chair. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're just walking or we're just walking along and all of a sudden something else catches your eye like a you know like ooh let's go over here and like mess around and then you go over there and you go over there <laughs> next thing you know you're like man it's friday and like what did i do this week <laughs> man that's that's how i am if i walk by the greenhouse i'll look in there and be like well you know what i see some ripe tomatoes i'll go in there and then an hour later i'm out there <laughs> picking tomatoes pulling weeds uh, I got, you know, I'm, there's constantly stuff to plant, go get my lettuce that I'm growing. I'll go stick another round of lettuce somewhere. And it's just like it, you can, you can lose weeks of time just puttering. Yeah. Yep. So but you're yeah, still looking your wood chipper? Oh, dude. Love that thing. Uh, the, the storm damage, That's great. the storm damage, you know, there's, there's some stuff that I've just pulled to the side and got out of the way and. That's the, I'll just deal with it when I get to it. And, uh, what day was, I forget which day it was. I think it was Thursday. I, uh, went and one, one of the trees that had snapped was on the line that feeds the pigs up in the woods, but it was still hitting full blast up in the woods and it hadn't broke the wire. And so I was just, I just left it. It was like, okay, like everything's still working. The pigs won't get out. Um, I can deal with it later. Well, Thursday was later. And so I went over there and I was trying to, uh, get the tree off of the line without breaking the line. And I barely touched it with the tractor and the tree just snapped, popped the line, broke the line. <laughs> and so now it's like, okay, now I'm committed to this project. Now I have to get this, like, I have to get the tree up, get it cut up so I can lift it up so I can get the wire out. And it was kind of a mess. So, you know, it was like, yeah, this will be a quick little five minute job turned into like four hours later. Uh, but got the tree cleared. <laughs> I actually finished, finished the limbs that I couldn't get because my grapple was broken. I finally got the parts. Uh, what was that, was that this weekend? Last weekend, got the parts for the grapple. Finally got the grapple, like all put together. And, uh, man, you know, like, not having a tractor, I figured out how to do stuff. Like you just, you just make do, but now having the tractor and having a grapple, I don't have to worry about the poison ivy. It used to be, if I knew I was going to be working in poison, poison ivy, I would go in there with the weed eater, <laughs> I'd knock it all down and then I'd do what I needed to do. Like it's, it's like five steps before you get to what you want to work on. Now I got that tractor and a grapple. It's like, I want that tree right there. Just drive up, rip it out of the ground never even have to touch the poison ivy it's it's almost like it's too easy like it's almost too easy and i i <laughs> in just a small it way easy. it shouldn't be that easy in just a small <laughs> way i kind of hate it because it's like you know i got the tractor and then i got the golf cart and i'm watching my my waistline my gut increase and it's just like yeah yep yeah, this <laughs> The spare tire around my waist keeps getting bigger because I keep walking less and less. I need to start hauling those buckets by hand again. <laughs> yeah. Using an axe. <laughs> I've been meaning to ask you, Ben. Remember that freezer I gave you? Did oh, yeah. You, did you ever do anything with that? Yeah, I pressure washed that did sucker you get it out. Uh, I never I never tried plugging it in. Um, it, uh, oh. it really had a funk to it. 
Like I pressure washed that thing. Yeah. I washed it with soap <laughs> and I couldn't get the funk out of it. Like it really stunk. So I cleaned it out yeah. and I got it, I got it dry. And then I've been keeping feet in it uh, just to kind of okay. wrap, wrap. That's good. Yeah. It works pretty good as a, a feed storage. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I don't know why that came in my brain the other day. I was like, I wonder if Ben ever did anything with that. I think I did. You, did at... you know that? Al, where, that he, did, I don't know if we talked about that before. Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah. yeah I didn't it, want it. I was like, <laughs> I didn't want to deal with it. I don't think I would ever put like bar food in it, even if it did work. Um, like I said, it, <laughs> yeah. it had quite a funk to it. I don't know. For feed, Maybe, it's perfect. Yeah, for feed, who cares? Um, actually, it's currently sitting outside in front of the chicken coop because I don't have room in the shed because I've got the brooder in the shed. Um, I had mm -hmm. moved the brooder out uh, after our last batch of layers we got. And it's still sitting in there, and I figured just leave it there until we get our meat birds. Well, those are coming in about a week. So, well, uh, nice. All right. Once that once that brooder's done, then I can get the brooder out of there, and then I can get that freezer in there, and then I have two yeah. dead freezers that I can keep feed in. It's kind of nice, like yeah, keeping feed in there. I haven't had one rat eaten bag since putting feed in the uh, the freezers. It's a great yeah. feed storage. That's good. You don't empty them in there, right? You just keep the keep them in a bag. Yeah, I just stack the, the bags bag. in there. Put the bag. All right. That's good. I thought about dumping the feed in there, but uh, I don't know. It's kind of easy if I need to haul a bag somewhere. It's you know still in a bag. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, if I was buying right. feed by the by the tote, I might do something like that. But I don't know. It seems like you could possibly even there. maybe you could even um, maybe even divide it, like put a divider in the middle, so you could have different feeds in there instead of like one massive amount of feed, one kind, you know. I wonder if that would. I mean, work. currently, what I'm doing with the freezer that, you know, the dead freezer that's in the shed right now is I'll load up chicken feed on one side of the freezer and pig feed on the other side, um, and then various miscellaneous things. I. Uh, oh okay, yeah. I don't. I don't know if you guys have played around with, you know, adding stuff to your feed, but I have really, really noticed a huge increase in how the pigs are growing and how healthy they look by adding like our tractor supply sells organic alfalfa pellets. And so I've started adding like a, you know, a scoop of alfalfa alpha to their feed. And it seems like while they're on it, they just seem like they're, I don't know, they look way healthier. Their coats look great. They don't seem as ravenous, you know, when I feed them. Um, I've also, when we order no. our feed, is that the feeder pigs? It's everybody. Or is that all I, the pigs? I give it, I give it to everybody. all the pigs. Um, you know, a bag of alfalfa pellets, I think they're 40 pound bags from tractor supply. That'll last me, I don't know, a week and a half. And that's feeding all of our pigs. Um, also when we order yeah. our feed, they sell raw ingredients if you wanted to like mix your own feed. And so I've been buying whole peas. And I soak the peas until they, you know, they quadruple in size. They get huge once they're soaked. And then I add those in addition to the alfalfa pellets to everybody's feed. And I don't know. Uh, I notice, you know, every time we're, uh, we have piglets and the, uh, the mama pigs are nursing, usually by about eight weeks. I have such a hard time keeping weight on the mamas. Uh, their condition just starts dropping. And it's it's almost like there's nothing I can do. There's no amount of feed I can give them to keep their condition up. And we were doing really good. Like I had both the mama pigs up in the woods. You know, that's 15 babies that both of them are nursing because the babies, they don't care who their mom is. They just know where the food is. Um, so each mom is having to nurse 15 piglets. Well, I was keeping condition on them really, really well this time. And I ran out of peas ran out of alfalfa and just went back to feed. And within a week, they, uh, their condition started dropping, you know, mm -hmm. I'm having to up, up their feed. I mean, they're, they're already on a higher ration anyways, because they're nursing, but 
it was just it was interesting this time this is like our fifth or sixth litter we've had here and every time i try something different to try to keep the uh the condition of the mamas up but yeah it's kind of a race it's a race to the uh the eight week mark try to keep the condition on the mamas so they look good uh and then you know at eight weeks i'll pull the pull the babies and wean them and then of course then it's easy to get the condition back on but yeah i don't know it's all those weird things that you you uh experiment with raising animals i add um sunflower seeds to the pig's feed for like add, add an extra like i guess oil um for their skin you know they get they get rashy <laughs> yep. my my vegan pigs yeah <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I've tried, I've done sunflower seeds before and I don't know, I forget where I was getting them. There was some place I was getting them and I was adding that to their feed. But when I started getting the, uh, the peas from, uh, Kentucky organics, you know, coffee, um, that's the company, the company's called coffee. It's Kentucky feed farm and feed Kentucky organic farm and feed or something like that. I, I forget off the top of my head. K O F F I K O F I. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we started getting the peas from them when we would order our feed and it was like, it was amazing. Like it really was amazing. It was like, wow. Like the mama pigs, that's, those are the ones that I noticed the most. The rest of the pigs, I mean, mm. they're guinea hogs. They'll get fat on grass. Like you don't really have to do a whole lot, but it's really, uh, when they're nursing, that yeah. I notice it, you know, I've got, I've got a conventional pig raising book that I, I reference every now and then, um, it's just called raising pigs. Um, and it's all the conventional knowledge. It's like, okay, here, this size pig is going to need this much feed and yada, yada. It's all broken down. It's, you know, a science. And I tried that. Like I really did. I tried that and I felt like I was starving the pigs. Like I was starving them feeding them these, these rations that the, uh, you know, and these pigs are in mm. confinement in this book. Like this is confinement feeding. And it's like, yeah, this size pig is going to need this many pounds of feed a day. And it was like, okay. And so I've just kind of adapted to what looks right. What feels right. I don't know. That's just where I'm at. It's, it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a struggle. Like it's all, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, it's not a one it's size fits all experiment. for everybody. Yeah. It's just a big experiment. Yeah. What works for you and Al might not work for me. And you know, what works for my neighbor or, you know, any other friend who has pigs, everybody does it a little bit different. Everybody's got their own thing and you just kind of have to figure out what works for you. Now you keeping all your piglets this year. Are you going to be selling some of the 15? We, uh, we plan on selling. Um, I think what's weird. We, uh, ended up not selling as many as we wanted last year. Uh, and so we've got eight yearling pigs down there in that pen. And, you know, I told you guys about smoking a whole pig that kind of changed our, our whole way we view pigs. You know, I'm looking down here. It's like, man, we got at the time it was, we got nine pigs down here in this pen that, you know, we only wanted to keep like four of them. And now we, now we got nine, we got a feed. And then we, we smoked that one. It was like, oh no, we don't have too many pigs. They taste delicious smoked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's a different way of thinking for sure. You're not, you don't have to raise them all. It's like, if you get tired of feeding barbecue them, time, have just have a barbecue. barbecue. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Cause I've always looked at having a whole pig roast. I'm like, man, that's wasting a pig, but I'm coming. And I was coming at it from only having two a year. And I'm like, I don't want to do that with one of my pigs if I'm only raising two. But yeah, if you got eight or 15 of them yeah, and you don't need all those for the year, then that's a perfect opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, right now they're the perfect size too. You know, guinea hogs grow slow. You know, with these feeder pigs we got, they're only this big for this week. Next week, they're going to be even bigger. Uh, but these guinea hogs, you know, they're, they're probably between like the, I don't know, I'd say the smallest one that's a yearling is probably like 40 pounds, maybe. And then the biggest ones, maybe like 60, 70 pounds. Uh, 
And so it's like, well, you know, the little ones aren't going to outgrow the big ones. So we'll just keep the big ones uh, for, you know, processing because it's been my experience. If they're big from birth, they're going to be the biggest ones you got. Uh, so we just pick off the little ones. They fit in the smoker better. And I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's quite delicious when you're, uh, when you're yeah. done smoking that pig and all you have to do is just pull the bones out and you've got, you know, 30 pounds of shredded pork. I mean, guinea hogs are so <laughs> fatty anyways. They're, they're basted to perfection. I was just going to ask you that. Is all the fat just like melted away when you're done smoking them? Oh yeah. Uh, it's very, very moist, very succulent meat. Oh yeah. See, I'm, I'm starting to get <laughs> my mouth's watering here. I think what's funny is gross this weekend. <laughs> I, I I didn't know how the kids would react to having like a whole pig, you know, on a plate in the kitchen. Um, and, you know, these are farm kids. Like I figured, you know, I'm coming at it from, you know, thinking like a, a suburbanite. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, the, I don't think the kids are going to eat it. You know, it still looks like a whole animal. And they're like, can I have this? You know, <laughs> can I have this? Can I have that? I'm just like, yeah, sure. I'm sitting there trying to, you know, pull the bones out so I can shred the meat. And they're like sitting there sticking their fingers in it, grabbing this morsel and that morsel. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I was worried about. Yeah. So, yeah, that was that was really it. Not a whole lot to report this week, but that's all right. So what's going on, going on with you, Al? How's, how's uh, the flood and everything that you're dealing with out there? You build an ark yet? It's getting a little better. Not yet. Yeah. We've been dealing with a lot of rain, so we've been kind of like prioritizing projects to the weather. So I was able to get the first culvert filled in and fixed. And the morning I was doing that, I had to bring in one load of gravel for that. And I had the, tum the dump truck come back two more times and stockpile for the next one. But we were getting a bunch of rain coming in. So I'm like, okay, the road's dry. I can get gravel out here now. And then it's like four days of rain again so i don't want the dump trucks out here and we needed to get a big excavator out there to get to set that culvert it's it was probably six feet deep or say five and a half feet deep so my excavator wouldn't reach and we're trying to we had to get some big rocks and i didn't have the reach to set the culvert and set the the rocks on top of the culvert so we had to wait for that so it's just kind of weird it's like i want to get it done but i can't or if i do i'm going to make it worse so it's, I don't know, it's one of those things that's like, oh, I got to be a grown up and I got to like prioritize my work and <laughs> put it on the back burner and do something else. I don't like this. Yeah. It's hard. Yep. You know, so, but luckily we got the workshop now. So I was, we had the mini truck. We, we had that sitting for a while. So I, it died on us two years ago. And I was thinking it was the carburetor. So I bought a carburetor and I bought a rebuild kit. We, broke, we got it out, it ran for a little bit, and then it died. So I'm like, okay, on a rainy day, this will be a good rainy day project. Get this inside and mess with the carburetor. So I did. I'm like, I don't want to, I want to rebuild the old carburetor first, if I can. I don't want to put the new one on. So I tore into it, and I got looking. The new carburetor is like a new model. So the old carburetor has a choke that's vac ran by the vacuum lines. The new ones have a manual choke with no vacuum lines, and then it's like just made differently. So the um, rebuild kit I got for it is for the new style carburetor and not the old style carburetor. So I was like, oh. Mm -hmm. So I took the old one apart, tried tried fixing it, put it back on. It was still flooding out. Tried putting the new carburetor on. It won't fit. So they have they changed the design for like. So you got two linkages now. You got one for your throttle, and then you have one for your manual choke that I don't have. But that bracket makes it so it won't hook on. I don't. So I don't know what it's designed for, but it will not fit on the motor. So then I had mm -hmm. to Frankenstein the old one with taking parts and pieces out of the new one. Oh, so I wonder if the new one. Well, I wonder if that'll fit mine. Well, you, yours is is yours carbureted or is yours electronic fuel injected? Mm, I don't know. It's a ninety-seven. I bet you have a. I bet you yours is electronic fuel injected. Yeah, because that's like how oh, like if I could get like an EFI for this thing, that'd be nice. Hmm. But, did you get it going then? I did. I got it going. Well, I put it on and it wouldn't start. I'm like, Ugh. 
I thought I just parked it. The next day, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I just, it was just still flooded from the day before because the gas was just pouring. Like, it was like it would go in the carburetor and it would just pour out of the carburetor and then just sit on top of the motor. That's how much, like, that's how much it was just flooding. So the other thing was on it is somebody had put a electronic fuel pump and it came with a manual fuel pump and there was no return line on the electronic one. So I was like, maybe that's the issue. So I put a regular fuel pump on that had the re- return line and that still didn't do it. So then I hooked up both fuel pumps. I had the electronic one and the manual one. So at least that way, the manual one would have gas all the time, but it would be able to return the ex- the excess. Well, that wasn't it. So that's when I tore into the carburetors. So the, the third day I took it for a test drive, got it run. I'm like, oh, it's just running great. I go up to the road, and I can only go so far because the culverts have washed out. So I stop, yeah. turn around, back up, and as I'm backing up into the ditch, it's kind of like teeter-totters and stalls. I'm like, oh, and I couldn't stop <laughs> it again. So I had Olivia come get me. She towed it back. We towed it back with a can am And oh, I'm like, man. you know what? I probably ran out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> so the next uh, day, I put gas in it, and it's running good now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that's fun. But, well, that's good. You got it going, man. Yeah. yeah. It was one of those projects like if I would have quit, I wouldn't I would have never got it, but I just like nah, it ran good when we first bought it. There's gotta be something going on with it. It's got four thousand miles on it. Mm-hmm. It was from a campground, so it looks beat up, but it's like I'm sure it was just the kids who worked at the campground probably just beat on it. They didn't care, it's all dented up. But yeah. No rust on it, no rot. That's good. Yeah. The next the next thing will be now is we need tires. They have like they look like they're probably like the size of the tires you guys have on your gorilla carts. This is what this thing has. <laughs> My golf cart has bigger tires. They're like and it, yeah, it's got like ten inch tires on it. Wow. Yeah. So I got to do a lift and get yeah, some small. decent tires for it next. Does it really have ten inch tires on it? <laughs> yeah, they're like ten inch. That I think they're like eight inches wide or something. They're tiny. They're like a golf cart tires. Yeah. Yeah. It's like this a one, wheelbarrow. It was built for the U.S. Yeah, it was <laughs> built for the U.S., but it wasn't built to go on the road. Mm, wow. So I'm sure I can get regular tires and rims for it, and then I, it's going to need a lift kit. Yeah. I didn't want to do that until I got it running good. That's cool. So basically what you're saying is uh, you're the kind of mechanic that uh, it's good to have around if the, uh, the stuff were to hit the fan. <laughs> I, I would try to get it running at least. <laughs> I don't like giving up. <laughs> That's good. That's good. There's. I wish you were my neighbor, Al. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a f- few things that uh I've been my have you come look at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I know. You've been my mini truck mechanic. <laughs> I think it's a downfall though. Like when I had a mechanical garage for a while, and I hate. I used to hate having to tell people like, "Oh, I can't get it fixed," or "I can't do it." So it's mm. kind of one of those things, like, if you're doing it for yourself, it's one thing, because you can kind of do it at your own pace, but when you're doing it for somebody else, it's like, just, I think you just put more pressure on yourself. <laughs> yeah, but, that's true. That's probably true, yeah. But tell me it can be fixed. It can be fixed. <laughs> we'll, fi- we'll figure it out. <laughs> I don't care, Al. Just make it run. <laughs> right. <laughs> you just got to get it running. <laughs> so we got the Idaho pasture pigs this year, and my plan was, so we got four of them one's a male and three are females and one of the females we're keeping for breeding the other two we're going to be will be the feeders but i didn't know when we were getting them like what we were going to get if we were going to get a, another guy or not you know i didn't know what she would give us but they're just the three and one so now i'm like okay so i gotta separate the boar or the soon-to-be boar so he doesn't impregnate any of the ladies and i'm like I had planned on putting them in the woods, but they're growing, but they're not growing at the rate of a regular pig. So he's, I don't know, he's probably, he might be 40 pounds, 30, 40 pounds, but I was going to put him in the woods and we've been having coyotes a lot lately. I'm like, I just can't see putting him in the woods all by himself right now. Like, I don't think that's a good idea. So I'm, I came up with an idea. I'm going to build like a mobile pig mobile and I'm going off of the milk and stand stanchion like what you had been i'm gonna kind of yeah. build because we got the milk and stand i'm gonna build i started building another one and i'm gonna use hog panels on the side and i'm gonna do two gates for the front and the back and then i'm kind of thinking 
we can use it to help load animals in the future. Also, it's like we got to back, we could get the pigs in there or get cows in there and then back a trailer up to it. You need to have more something better to kind of work the animals into the trailer. That was a really awesome idea. Like, I like that idea. I hate, I hate building something for like one use. I'm like, okay, what else can we, we use this for? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Because loading pigs in a trailer is a pain, especially yep. if you're just using like pig netting or wire. You got to get out your cattle panel and stuff and make a corral. So I'm like, oh, we can just kind of get the pigs into this and we can back up to the trip with the trailer and kind of use that as a shoot. I'm like, if we get, when we get into cattle, if we need to load cattle or anything else later on in the future, we could. And then we can use it for piglets in the springtime. Like if it's terrible weather, but we want them outside, that kind of give them more of a shelter. So we're going to put a regular roof on it. That's something I want to build this winter, something like that. I don't know about being mobile, but something like I previously had yep. shelter. Um, did you leave some... that at the other property? Or did you take that? that down? Oh, I, yeah, I sold it with the people who with... bought the, our place. Yeah, I regret it. I regret that now. <laughs> it's one of the things I regret selling because I would have had that thing up already if I would have kept it. And for the price I sold it to them, I, I basically gave it to them. <laughs> yep. and now you bent all that pipe and everything yourself right yeah yeah yep. it was a labor of love i know i wish i would have kept it but... okay well is there things you'll do different now or you pretty much build it the same way um maybe not as big okay i mean i, I liked we liked it a lot i mean it didn't have to be as probably as big as i did it i don't know maybe that's the only thing I mean, be, have it being round because it was like a greenhouse. Yep. Um, it would be you could I could, but it would be hard to if I wanted to um, save rainwater off of it. Yep. You know, in that aspect of it, you know, that would be more difficult to do. I mean, you could, but it wouldn't be as efficient if it was just a straight roof. Right. But other than that, I liked it. I liked it. It was good. Yeah. That's cool. Now, how is Zeke? Does he try to get in with the ladies? Because I was like, my other thing, I'm like, if I keep these guys close to each other and they're just in pig netting, when it comes, like, when the ladies get into heat, is he just going to charge right through the fence? That's why I was like, I think I need something structural, like, more structural right now when he's first that's learning. What, that's what I think, too, but I haven't had an issue with him at yeah. all. Like, he's been super chill. Like, he just. He just doesn't care. I don't know. He just wants food and that's it. <laughs> I mean, like he's super chill. Sounds like Mo. Yeah, he's just a different animal. Like, it's wild. Like, he just was like, feed me and give me water. And he doesn't even need a shelter. He's out there in the woods. I have him in the tree covering and he just like does his thing. <laughs> it's wild. I always thought it's crazy how good pigs do in the wintertime outside in our climate they don't you know just give them like a little hut to get into and some hay and yeah they love it they like being out in the snow they'll eat the snow right you don't gotta water them too much if you don't want to i mean i we would used to give them water but maybe mm. they'd have a pot dish of water and they'd be out there eating the snow instead it's like <laughs> all right this works yeah and depending on what shelter i mean geez they would pick the tree more than the shelter Yep. you know if it was cooler but it's probably a smart idea, I guess, if you're hearing coyotes to not put a pig in there. I mean, with yeah. him being still smallish, right? Yeah. If if he was bigger and like could fend himself off, I'd have no problem doing it. But yeah, he's still on the smaller side. I'm like, mm. it's weird. Like the coyotes will come around in cycles. Like you'll hear him like, I don't know, you'll hear him like two or three nights in a row and like a huge pack of them howling. And then you won't hear him for like a month. And then they'll mm. come back. So I don't, they must have like their rounds that they do. We saw one after the hurricane, after all the flooding, the next, that morning, he was out by the chicken coop. And then he just, I think he was just stunned and they didn't know what to do with all the rain. Like I walked out there, he just kind of like looked at me and kind of looked <laughs> dazed and confused and then took up back in the woods. And I'm like, oh man, like this is not going to be good. He was near the chicken coop. He knows where the chickens are now, but yeah, we haven't seen him since, but we heard him howling after that. But wow. How lost. Yep. That was one of the things I was thinking, like, I wonder how all that rain affected the animals. And then I was thinking, like, the big one, like, all of our little creeks around here usually have, like, trout and just minnows and stuff like that in them. Like, 
there's no fish anymore and i'm like just got washed away so it's like wow i wonder how the bigger rivers fared or how the fish did in general yeah kind of leads me to a question how'd your uh your pond fare have you been up there did you uh, have any washout, lose so we, fish up there? I walked up there the day we found the culvert washed out because I'm like, oh, I got to get up there. Like, I'm like, I just got to walk up there and see. I'm like, if the dam blew out, like, that's going to be terrible. So I walked up to the, the pond looked fine. I wasn't able to tell if the fish were still in or not. I don't think they got washed out. I think they were fine. But I haven't been past that. So once we get the second culvert fixed, we can start driving up there and checking everything out better. I'll have to do some fishing and see how the trout are. I have a feeling there's more damage. But time will tell. It's good. So now it's just waiting and watching the weather. We got a bunch of rain in the forecast again, so we're just trying to plan our next projects. Struggle is real. You got to prepare for winter now, huh? Prepare for that winter? Yeah, that's the worst thing. Like <laughs> It's messing up our schedule. Like We're usually busy doing building projects that we can't do in the wintertime, but now we're trying to fix what got messed up from the big storm. Yeah. So, so that's been it for my week. What have you been up to, Jason? Um, so this week, so we separated our, uh, we had four, mo- they're four months old now, our, our baby piglets, cooney piglets. Well, they're not so babies anymore, but they're four months. And so I figured I'm going to, I separated them from Elvira, the mama pig, so they could stop harassing her. <laughs> she probably appreciated that. Yeah, I was like, mm, you know, they're probably fine. Like the last piglet she had, I, I, I think I had them together for like six months and I felt like that was just way too long. Um, because it seems like as soon as I separated them, the, those pigs like grew like bigger. I mean, you know, they're small pigs, but I feel like they grew a little bit more bigger. You know, they weren't fighting all fighting for food and all that. So this time I was like, okay, let's do it at four months. And, um, I mean, they're still pretty small, but like, you know, they're four months. They're not really, you know, nursing or anything like that. And plus, you know, I just figured I mean, she needs a little break because we're going to end up putting back her back in with Zeke again. I'm thinking we're, we might do it soon. And so at least give her like a couple more weeks of just kind of just chilling out and being by herself and just like, <laughs> you know, um, recovering, I guess, um, before we put her back in with Zeke and have more pigs. So, um, but, you know, mentally, for like us humans, we think like, oh man, you know, I'm taking her, her babies away, <laughs> you know, like they're going to be sad, but like, they don't care, you know, like <laughs> they're pigs. They're like, they absolutely do not care. You know, like I think, you know, mentally we, we think that they do, but they don't. So when, <laughs> it's just kind of funny to like think of when you watch the mama pig, like, headbutt and throw her babies out of her feed pan when she's eaten. <laughs> yeah. They don't care. <laughs> yeah. It's so wild to see. Yeah. Uh, she's just like, no, nope. yeah, you're not getting in my feed. Like, boom. Yeah. I know. They're not humans, guys. They're not human. <laughs> not at all. How's um, the hernia piglet doing? Do you still have him? I still have him. He's still around him. He's, you know, I try. I'm trying to see how he is as far as he does seem kind of smallish. Then, I mean, he's in fully intact still. Like, yep. I mean, there's even a male, castrated male with them too, with him, and um, that one's big. Seems to be bigger than him. So, yeah, I mean, we're still gonna. I'm still gonna end up butchering him like soon. I keep saying that because I don't really want to do it, but I'm going to do it. And, you know, he's going to go on the smoker. Do I need to have you over for a a pig cookout so you can uh, work up the nerve to do it with your pigs? I'll bring my pig over. (laughs) I'll bring my pig over and you get your pig, piglet, and then we'll have a two piglet smoke (laughs) out. Yeah, I mean, we're going to do it soon, probably, so. Can't get him, let him get too big because then, you know, yeah, I don't want him to have babies with the sisters. Yeah. You know, because they're all kind of together still. Um, have a little bit of time. So I'm just kind of just waiting. I don't know. I don't know what I'm waiting for. I guess for him to get a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, that's, I don't want to do it, but because he's so small, because he's like, <laughs> like, it's so little pig. And to be able to do that, 
it's just mentally it's just kind of doesn't seem right but but i you know one of those things that you have to do it um so today we uh we officially started renovating our kitchen which i'm excited about we're like all right let's do this so today we did demo today was demo day which those days are always fun um so i think we have a plan of action pretty much well lorraine she's the planner i'm just like just tell me where to go (laughs) tell me what you want (laughs) so we go we went back and forth of trying to like okay should we should we just get brand new cabinets should we keep the cabinets that we already have and just kind of work with them and just paint them or something so uh yesterday we decided like we're gonna try to keep the cabinets that we have and just try to work with that and just paint paint them and the thing was we got to rearranging everything kind of um so you know we're trying to work with it um because we felt like we were downgrading by getting the cheap cabinets at lowe's you know because the cabinets that we have now i mean they're they're good cabinets they're just you know outdated and they can you know they're they're just outdated i mean well, they're made out of actual it's like wood, real wood they? you know it's yeah they're yeah for sure they're like real wood they're they're pretty they're sturdy still they're not nothing wrong with them um they just could use a coat of paint and uh so yeah so thing is we got to rearrange them so we did that all that today take off all our top cabinets on our walls and um so now we're at a point where I still got to rip up the floor um, to put hardwood floor. That's linoleum, isn't it? Because there's where the ki- it's linoleum, but where the kitchen parts at, they added like a little, like I think probably a quarter inch of plywood. Luan, I think they call it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And plus the vinyl on top of that. So that part is raised. So there's like almost two transitions that cross together, like, hmm. like cross and there are raised like even a quarter. So I feel like I need to either rip that part off to make it all even or on the other side, add a quarter of inch of plywood. So that way it's all even. We're kind of like, not sure what to do there. We're, um, it would cost more money if I added, of course, but then it, it's going to be more pain in the butt if I try to rip out that kitchen to, because it's all pain, glued. Pain they the glued butt. it. Yep. Decisions. They glued and nailed it. Pain in the butt, save money. <laughs> mm. So, yeah, I'm not sure what we're going to do there, but, but you know, at least we started on it, and uh, it already looks twice as better than what it did as far as more room and more open. That's cool. They make a cabinet paint that works really good for painting the cabinets. It's a little bit, I don't know, more durable, I guess. That's Where do you get that at? Um, Lowe's, Lowe's has it, it. But we've also, I'm trying to think, is it Benjamin Moore? I think that's the one that we've gotten. It's a little bit more money, but it, it's it'll hold up to scrubbing. So if you got to paint the cabinets, and then that later on, I'm if you to like scrub pretty off. Pretty sure that's, that's what we painted yeah. our cabinets in. And yeah, it absolutely holds up to scrubbing. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's definitely worth it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. At, yeah, we're just going to paint them. I think Lorraine has a color that we're going to paint them. You know, new new uh, countertops, new uh, paint, and uh, new range hood. What are you doing for countertops? Probably just like a butcher block. Butcher block, cool. Yeah. Already, you know, made butcher block yep. that you just buy. Um, and then I'm making an island at some point. That's probably the last thing I do, like a... I think it might be on wheels or something, some kind of little more counter space. Um, That'd be cool. Yeah, redoing a pantry area that we have too. Now, do you, did you already have the pantry? Is that something you're making? We have the pantry. It's in our kitchen. It's um, no, it's kind of hard to explain. It's like a has those like I don't know whether bifold doors. Yep. Um, it was already there that we've been using it because at first I think when we first moved in we we're like yeah this makes no sense it's so little so small but like now that we're here and we're using it it actually makes really good sense to be there because there's nowhere else we would have like our spices or you know just things that we have um 
there's no other room for it because we don't have room for that stuff. But otherwise, it would be in the basement. Yep. So, so we're going to leave that. I'm just going to update it as far as make it more sturdy because it's already starting to bow with like, you know, all these heavy canning stuff that we do. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the shelves are starting to bow down. So I'm just going to reinforce it and make it stronger and durable and, and just paint everything. And, you know, it doesn't seem like it would, it's that bad. I guess ripping up the floor, if I do that, that's probably the worst of it. Um, but everything else looks good. Like the walls look, there's no holes in the walls or anything like that. So they really just need to be painted. Um, That's cool. But yeah, other than that, I mean, yeah, so we're going to do that all this week. And I mentioned in the last podcast, we're going to be done in one week. You can so do by it, the time we do another podcast, we're going to be done. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll see, but we got quite a bit done today. I mean, it's not a huge kitchen, so it's not like... And plus, now, now we're saving the cabinets, so it's like that's one less thing I got to rip out. Yeah. Um, now, how far does that floor go? Does it go into you, like your dining room and everything too? Yeah, if, we, yeah, if we're going to... We're doing the whole... It's pretty much half the house, so it's okay. like the kitchen, the dining room, and the hallway. That's, uh, I think it comes out to like 330 square feet. Um, that's going to have the new flooring. Cool. So yeah, so yeah, because we're doing the kitchen, might as well do the do the rest. So and make it all uh, the same. Um, plus recess lighting. I think recess lighting. You know, that's gonna be last too, probably. But yeah, we started on it, so that's what we're doing all week as far as content. Nice. It's awesome. It'll be a nice change. Are you doing any electrical? Just the rate. Um, the recess lighting. Just if you don't need any more outlets, you got enough in the kitchen. No, I think the outlets are fine. Um, we have like, there's like one light in the middle of the whole thing. So I might just maybe see if I could just tie into that light. Yep. And then just do like, I don't know, four, six ceiling lights. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, hopefully not, it's not a huge deal. Can you get up to the ceiling easy or above the ceiling, like in the attic or something for wiring? Yeah. Yeah, we have a good crawl space up there. Yeah. Oh, that's it's, easy. It's good. Yeah, it shouldn't be shouldn't be bad. The new style, like I don't know what you would call them, like the thin like pancake lights that just clip in and have like a balance. Yeah. Those are nice. Right. Yeah. I we haven't even bought that stuff yet yet. Um, you can never have too many. I'll tell you that. Like everybody yeah. always tells me, like, oh you get too much light, too much light. And then just no. I'm like, all the lights we did here in our kitchen, everybody's like, Oh, way too much lights, way too much lights. And I'm like <laughs> It's the perfect amount. We got them on three different outlets or three different switches. So when we don't want them all, we don't have to have them all. But when you need them, you need all you need all all of them sometimes. So it's nice to have them for sure. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Because at first I was like, eh, four lights, but then you got to think about filming, right? You got filming. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, we film we film in the kitchen sometimes. Yeah, we all do. Yep. It's like you need to think about like production. <laughs> you know, like and then the lights can't flicker the 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 camera. Yep. I don't know if you guys experience that. Yep. The um shop lights like the battery operated shop lights are the worst for that. Like the Milwaukee ones and the DeWalt's. So like yep. when you're doing all of your construction, you got those going and your camera just going it's like uh, so yeah my the led lights that i put in my big barn when i have those on and i have my gopro on it affects the gopro uh, like yeah. there's like waves yeah that go through the as as you're filming but my bigger camera that i use my sony it, it doesn't affect it yep but it's such a pain but <laughs> i know it's like you gotta think about this stuff like <laughs> well i think my workshop i was like why don't you have windows because when you got the sun coming through at the wrong time or you got the wrong angle and you got sun glare coming through, like it messes all the filming up. Like I don't want windows <laughs> for filming. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. And it's like the, where our windows are at, like in our kitchen, it makes everything kind of dark, yep. you know, where, how, how it is. And then when you're, where you're pointing the camera, mm -hmm. which drives me nuts. Now I, I don't but, um, I feel your pain there. 
You gotta. You can only film holding the camera in one spot. If you turn, it's all blown one out. Angle. Yeah. And I told you to no white walls, no white cabinets, because when you're filming with white, like it looks terrible. Like I don't know, it just it, I think it just yeah. sets the white balance of the cameras off. So I'm like, nope, we're not doing white cabinets. We we gotta have this. We gotta have that. Just for mm. filming. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping. I mean, we're gonna paint all the all of our houses wood paneling. So that makes it worse. Cause it's like the kitchen's really dark. Um, yeah. so hopefully a uh, color would, uh, you know, make everything brighter, but yeah, we had to order, you know, you go at Lowe's website and they have, say they have everything in stock and then you go down there and it's like, Oh, we don't have these in stock. Yep. So we have, we're kind of waiting on stuff. <laughs> and you don't have a home Depot close. It's basically Lowe's. You got to travel a good ride. To get to Home Depot, Home Depot's in yeah. our direction in any direction, an hour away in any direction. Uh, we looked at Home Depot, but it wasn't any. They had some stuff there, but it wasn't anything really cheaper or different than our closest lows. Yeah. So now we're just figuring out like cabinets, like as far as uh, hinges. Yep, hinges and because our cabinets, our ca- old cabinets have a what do you call it? A rabbited edge, like a lip. Yep, and we the hinges, you know the 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 hinges that hide, you know that you don't really see the hinge. They don't really make those for that edge. I found one hinge online that Rockler sells, <clears throat> and they're selling them for twenty five dollars a piece. Ooh. Wow, it's a lot. I'm like, if it was a regular hinge at Lowe's, they're like six bucks, and you guys are selling them these special hinges for twenty five dollars. I'm like, I might as well buy new cabinets. Yeah, at that price. I do have Because I count on the hinges I need. I have one burning question. It would cost me $500. Oh, geez. Yeah. That's a lot. All right. Are you hinges. Gonna, are you going to keep the, the door poles? I was wondering that. Mm, I don't know. I don't know if I don't know if we were or not. The They're like all of them, like, looking. They're all separate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've never yeah, seen. Yeah, so some of the door poles have a. Uh, they're a spoon and a fork on the, the, the our walls, uh, the, the doors on our walls. They're shaped like a spoon and a fork. I don't think we're going to save those. Man, I, <laughs> I'd never seen anything like that. You I was them? like, uh, nah, they, they wouldn't Does go with make, our, make, our... Wants, make one some in the kitchen? <laughs> I don't think they'd go with the, the mint green uh, motif we got in here in the kitchen. But yeah, those, those are like the yeah. most unique uh, door pulls I've ever seen, and it's appropriate for the kitchen, like you know, knife and fork. Yeah, they pulls. are. They're pretty. They're pretty fun. But yeah, I don't think we're gonna be keeping those though. Wow, that's too bad. <laughs> that's funny. They might be worth something one day. I'll put them on eBay or something. <laughs> yeah, vintage door pulls. You can find them on eBay. <laughs> find yeah. them on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, those are out. <laughs> But All yeah, out. nothing too crazy we found as far as when we were demoing stuff. Hmm. That's nothing good. too crazy. Yeah. That's good. You didn't find the, the stash of a million dollars in a shoebox? No. Those, That's too bad. Yeah. The, the yeah gold coins I didn't find. Yeah. Grandpa's old gold coins. <laughs> <laughs> no. But yeah, other than that, man, hopefully so, we can move forward with this. So is it like the hottest week of the year that you're doing this project inside? Is that why you chose to go to do it this time of the year? Or Yeah, that's probably one of the reasons. But I felt like if we didn't do it now, then we would probably have to wait till like January or February to do it. Yep. Because, you know, we're butchering animals this winter and just, you know, th- something else is going to come up. And I felt like this was like a window that we had that we weren't really... We're not doing any workshops this month. So, you know, we had time. And then plus, you know, we have some family that are coming in a few weeks or so, like next month or end of the month and stuff. So it was either now or, or wait right? more. But then who knows? By then, something else is going to come up. So it's like, let's just let's just do it. Let's get it done. How are you liking the back door you added in your garage carport area? Uh oh yeah yeah it was good like we like it you use it a lot now 
Oh, I always use it. <laughs> the, the girls make fun of me. It's like, how can we never go to the front? Through the front? They're going through the front door to go out, like to get in the car and, and leave somewhere. And I always just go through the back. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't want my neighbors knowing that I'm leaving all the time. <laughs> Besides from your car leaving. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, it's just a habit. It's like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I love it though. Like having a back door is like essential <laughs> got the hole there i'm going to use it yeah i know just off a of principle yeah i know it's crazy but yeah other than that i mean man hopefully we get this done this week <laughs> you can do it yeah have you so ben have you announced your uh pig classes yet uh not officially um we have oh, the, okay. the dates like wrote down on the calendar we just haven't officially yeah. i mean people could go to your website and like look at it if the, if you do no i don't works. think i don't think we've put it on the website yet um oh, okay we uh we hold off doing it until i don't know maybe like a couple months out um so we can avoid yeah. having uh emails from people i don't know uh, it's it's been fine every other time we've done it you know we'll just post and then talk about it and stuff like that and Classes will fill up pretty quick, but I don't know. We just we just haven't done it. I guess that's the short answer. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, because we're we're doing pig workshops this year. Ben's doing some this year, so I was just mentioning it to folks who are listening. But if you're wanting to uh, learn how to butcher a pig, what month? Like, this is no excuse. <laughs> Gosh, what are we starting? Like <laughs> October. Uh, yeah, October, November, We're doing December, them on October, January, November. like four months. That's yeah. cool. Nice. Well, like, we're not doing them on the same day. Yeah. So <laughs> we made sure of that. Yeah, we, that. We, we coordinated <laughs> that way. But, if someone wants to go to our class or wants to go to Jason's class, like, they can work it out. Yeah, so if anyone out there wants to learn how to butcher a pig, well, you know, there's many different opportunities this winter to attend one of our classes um many dates to choose from so for me it's in october and november and then ben october november december january i think <laughs> hey meg when do we start october or november definitely. october um yeah we're doing one october one in november one in december and then we're doing a hand hewn class in january so yeah it's gonna be a, a busy winter yeah yeah, you can look at um, Ben's website and then my website. So, cool. How about you, Al? You're not doing any workshops? <laughs> not any plan. Now I feel like I got to do something. Like, I feel like <laughs> I got to do oh, something now, Al. <laughs> yeah. Culvert. Build a culvert workshop. <laughs> culvert installing classes. <laughs> <laughs> How to build an arc. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Flotation devices found cool, around guys, the you have anything? Yes. You go. <laughs> In case of a flood. In case of a flood. So you guys got anything else or? I think that's about it, huh? That's it. I think that's it. All right. We'll leave it at that. I appreciate everyone listening and watching this podcast. Thank you so much. Um, if you're not, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Homestead Shop Talk Podcasts, uh, or uh, head on over to iTunes and leave a, a good comment and uh, share it with uh, your friends and neighbors uh, and your uh, favorite grandma. But uh, thank you guys for listening and watching, and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks. Have a good week, everybody. Later, everybody. <laughs>